Geiger, Director of Photography. I'm Ashley Kennedy, I play Sila. I'm Meredith Noel, I'm going to say I was Pharaoh one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bree Woods, I play Dez. <laughs> I'm Kyle Thomas Dick, I played uh, the Hunter. <laughs> Let's get into it, shall we? All right. Inspiration. Where did it come from? Uh, partially from drugs. He's <laughs> <laughs> been smoking the movie. Just, you probably guess. Um, I'll go close. Um, yeah, I've always been a fan of fantasy, supernatural. Um, we started to talk about making a film before we had an idea. And I kind of worked backwards. So I knew Marcus. We've been working together for a decade. Um, Derek, can we give a shout out to Derek, by the way? The two of them, and then my older brother, Dean Albright, uh, who's our executive producer. Um, long story short, we, over the course of the decade, came up with a lot of tricks to do things cheaply. Um, and we kind of put all of them together. And the witch part, um, I was high one night, and <laughs> I text Bree just out of the blue and said, hey, I'm thinking about writing a script about witches, are you in? <laughs> and she said yes. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So let's talk about the cast, because I saw some amazing individuals. Raise your hand if you were also in the film. I see a few. Where's the pie? I see a few great individuals out in the audience. Yeah. So this, so this takes a village, right? It takes a, a team. And so let's talk about that. Um, how you guys cast it for this film. Um, um, I'll just start. Obviously, like I said, I hit a three. And a lot of it um, was three people that she knew. And Trey, Robert Kopp is right here. Most of the cast came through the two of them. Um, I worked with Ashley a little bit, but if Bree, if you want to talk about how you got everybody. Yeah, it's a big, um, you know, Kansas City is a huge art scene. Um, there's a lot of talent here. And when Jay emailed me, texted me, called me, um, got a hold of me, we both were really fixated on the idea of like keeping as much talent in KC as possible. Like we knew a lot of the greats that I hadn't worked with and I knew a lot of up and coming young talent. So it was just, I, I feel like it was a huge combination. Just, it was friends, like it was all family. It was people calling people who knew people saying, hey, Thursday, are you free? come over and hang out in this van, and then that's how it worked out. It just was, you know, it's just a big family effort. I love it. And when we talk about Kansas City, it does have an amazing source, resource of talent here. Let's get into the location. Why did you guys decide to have it right here in Kansas City? Why did you choose the locations of, of filming this film in Kansas City? For me, it was a lot about the greenery. Uh, Marcus and I talked a lot about the visuals for the film. And there's just not a lot of cities that have the type of greenery that Kansas City does. Uh, I got my start here, so I knew a lot of uh, cast and crew. And it just made sense for us to be here. Um, the entirety of this film cost $50,000. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just people coming together to help each other out. And you get a place that has community like this, you gotta take advantage of it. So you talked about the, the budget was low, right? And I know we have some um, film tax credits and things like that that we're talking about. So I want to give a few seconds for you to talk about how um, that may impact you and everything that you guys have going on, right? Um, for future projects, maybe. Let's get into some of that. Uh, <laughs> so that's kind of a loaded question. Maybe. So there's a whole lot going on with that. Um, obviously it would be beneficial to the community as a whole. Uh, I can't argue with that at all. Um, I would love if we got something passed that could be distributed you know, equitably, but that's a conversation for another day. 
so it would help bring bigger projects into town that would help recruit members, right? So starting out right there, you know, people are going to be making more money. There's going to be a lot more money in people's pockets. Um, yeah, you do want to add that. Does anyone want to touch base on incentives or bringing bigger projects into the city? Yeah, ta tax incentives in, in this town. <laughs> I got a couple things to say. Uh, taxes in this town would actually be beneficial to the point where it would keep projects like Ozark yeah. in Missouri because it was filmed in Georgia. It wasn't filmed in the Ozarks. So uh, a KC Film Commission or Missouri Film Commission would keep a place or a project like that in the state, not shot in Georgia and then named Ozark. <laughs> room alone, there are creators and innovators and visionaries who don't have the resources. And I think more importantly than the resources is the access. Like, it's very hard to get started without knowing the people, the places, the things, and the money. So without those incentives, you're forced to go elsewhere. And that's why I feel like there's, everybody always talks about, specifically with black talent and, and talent of color, how people tend to leave Kansas City, and you tend to have to go to a bigger market that is, you know, trading with you. And it would be wonderful if we were able to create our own our art in house. Yes. I think that's the hardest thing to do, and I don't think it should be that way. So it would be wonderful if we were able to keep some of that money and keep a lot of that talent in Kansas City and build from within. Instead of forcing people to go out. I'm definitely the catalyst for the arts as well. So let's get into the racial um, undertones that were in the film. Uh, do you want to speak on that? I noticed um, in one of the articles that I read about um, this film is talking about uh, Missouri to Kansas, right? Like some of the underlines there. Do you want to speak into any of that? I know you touched on it just briefly. <laughs> just briefly. Do you want to speak on any of that? Um, to be honest, not a ton. And the reason for it is part of the original idea when I crafted the start of the story was it wasn't going to be too heavy. And so what I did with a lot of almost every department is I let people have the room to operate. So for me to touch on how you know any of that race affected them, I don't know if that's even my place. I wrote the basics of the story. So where I would like to pivot, if that's okay, is to the two of you. Um, I didn't give them any real direction on how they were going to pull that off. And I knew that this was going to be a thing. And a black woman turning herself into a white man. I knew, yeah, so I knew it would be a thing. I didn't want to take it over the top. I let them handle it the way they wanted to. And I don't know if they, anyway, I'll just let I'll Talk let about getting into that character. I don't know. Well, yeah. <laughs> I know for me, and Jay and I didn't have this conversation, you know, stuff you're doing the back end on your own and thinking. But you think about equity and power, and you think about someone who feels disempowered, and then trying to figure out in whatever twisted way they can of how to gain some type of power or voice or feel in a way that they can control their circumstances. And who in the United States has more power or control or resources than a white man? Um, um, I cannot imagine moving through the world in that way with that kind of freedom because I've been in a black body and in a feminine body my entire life. So. Because Pharaoh wants power, she wants to be able to move through the world freely, and she wants to continue to collect this power. The, the representation is often you think of a white man. And, and from a practicality standpoint, when I was hired on, um, Meredith had already had the part. And so when I was told that I would be uh, taking on the role of a person who was impersonated by uh, a black woman, I immediately wanted to know how Meredith was going to impersonate Farrah. Um, and so I 
wanted to see her audition tape and who wanted to meet with her to see how she was, what she was going to bring to that role of Farrah so I could bring her and into that role to do that role justice. Yes. Because I wanted to do, I, I wanted to bring as much as she did to that role. So when that reveal happened, uh, the payoff was as large as it could be. Very nice. Well, you, you all did a really amazing job portraying those two characters, so kudos. Let's talk about, I know this was your first time directing and writing the film. Let's talk about that process. How was that for you? Introducing, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> long days. <laughs> uh, long day. anyway, uh, <laughs> it was it was challenging but freeing at the same time. Um, again, I, I just said I didn't want to make the film too heavy, so I'll just talk about it as a writer first. Um, there were elements of the story that I cut. Yeah, I feel like it might have made it a little deeper or a heavier story, but I went back and cut it like that. Um, so even in you know, the moment where they're talking about dying and then you cut and they're dancing. Um, that's just kind of, kind of what I wanted to do, just follow the joy, follow the happiness, at least as much as I could with the story, the story would be pain, which would be, you know, emotion, all those fun things. So then, as the producer trying to, you know, make sure that whatever my brain thought of as a writer, I pull off, Marcus Geiger um, was key. So even as I was developing the ideas, uh, going back and forth with Bree and with Marcus, uh, you know, even when I finished the first draft as a writer, me and Marcus going through it every day for quite a while about what I can actually pull off financially with the resources that I have. Um, so there was that part of it. And then the other part of it was talking with Derek about what visuals I could actually pull off uh, without making him angry with me. So, <laughs> Uh, so those two two parts of it, just writing and producing, ended up being a lot about how I could craft a story uh, with everyone's help that we could actually pull off that was going to be good. And then as a director, um, I leaned on, well, I leaned on everybody, because to be completely honest, uh, we didn't really have an art team. So most of us helped out. So Ellis, Tony, Nick. Uh, my g and &E team, if any of the other ones are here too, um, they actually helped do some of the set dressing and, and set that. Um, you know, just as a director, I didn't have time to really have limited resources. So again, it's that community that Bree was talking about, but those three guys on top of doing their job, JJ helped to rescue over there, JJ. Um, yeah, as a director, I just leaned on every single person that I could, uh, because again, I was also well, so yeah, just it was a challenge, and I'm not entirely sure how we got through it every day. Um, I'm sure at some point uh, Marcus was tired of me calling, uh, but yeah, it was it was just a lot. It was, I'll be honest, it was a lot. What advice? Give me some advice that you would give to an aspiring and up and coming filmmaker. I'll go last. And I mean, if that's for anyone. Let's go down the road. Let's go down, Let's go down the road. road. And then everyone think about it and get your questions ready. So I'm going to come to you all next, okay? Okay. Um, people tell you to write what you know, but I would say write whatever you're passionate about and follow that. That's my best advice. Yeah, if you love, I'm sorry. If you love something, go after it. I mean, don't. Don't let someone tell you, um, and there are going to be a lot of people, people that you love, are going to tell you that's not worth it. Go after it. Write that shit down, um, and and be passionate about it. Be worth. Make it worth fighting against someone wholeheartedly, and research it. I mean, don't go blindly into it. Understand what it is you're trying to write about. Like when like when someone's going to argue with you about it, know what it is. That you're trying to write about. Don't just blindly roll into it. But don't ever quit. It's so easy, so many different times to quit. Don't do it. 
Yeah, to um, piggyback off of what Kyle was saying, um, the best advice I can give is to be um, diligent and be committed. Um, take in input, but live in your truth. So for me, um, being a freelance cinematographer, that's something that I have to remind myself of. I think we oftentimes find ourselves in positions where we feel um, that we are inadequate or not fully living out our truths as artists, but I think that's where you surround yourself with people that are like-minded, get a strong support system, and just be diligent. Like, stay committed, honor your craft, whatever it is, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, I guess I would say understand your resources and that your resources are not always in a big hub city but they can be in your own backyard this community around here is wonderful you don't need a million dollars to make a really wonderful movie um, so understand that the people that you hold close to you um, can be your biggest supporters um, I think Courageous. Don't let your anxiety and your fear stop you from doing something that you would do if they weren't there. Um, be kind. Know that this is a community of people. It's not just a movie of one. And be open to changing your ideas about how something's going to go. You never know what uh, stimuli you're going to bump against, and it might be the best thing that happens to you. I'll just do your thing. Like, honestly, just be yourself, you know, like, I, I don't know how else to say it. The amount of ridiculousness that's in this movie is just little things that we've picked up throughout our lives. And if you're not living, how can you write a story about other people, right? Like, you don't know what life is, so be yourself, experience things, just let it ride. I think that is worth another